Europe and its main supranational institutions hosted in Brussels are undergoing a period of change that will culminate in next year renewal of the European Parliament and of the European Commission, the executive arm of the European Union. Despite the perceived or effective weakness of active European leadership, the European Union is already under transformation. The first key change is on the scope and focus of the EU policy agenda, with the emergence of a more global perspective. We can see a much wider and greater stance of the EU in international negotiation on environment, energy, labor, civil rights, financial supervision, and of course trade, as illustrated by the opening of the transatlantic trade and investment partnership with the US or the dispute with China on solar panels. The second change is about the way decisions are driven, influenced and taken at EU level with the broader emergence of often discrete intergovernmental negotiation and at the same time of more open stakeholders consultation. National Parliament and a wide range of economic and social players have the potential to influence new legislative initiatives from design to implementation at the local level. Too often, this new co-legislative approach remains aspirational or just a formal exercise because of the lack of investment required by stakeholders to understand Brussels and interplay with the local regulatory framework. The third change and challenge is about building a truly economic union with a new system of economic and financial governance now at its infancy, but already directly impacting the whole banking sector in Europe. This change is linked to the broader essential question of the Europe that we want. The type of response may sanction the end or provoke the renaissance of the European Union. The pace, scope and effectiveness of change is not only a function of the will of policymakers and of the capacity of EU civil servant to overcome the bureaucratic mindset for which Brussels is best known. It very much relies on the capacity of business representatives and other stakeholders to be more proactively engaged and contribute to the change process that is underway. This is not often the case yet, and I believe that we, as independent, trusted advisors, have a role to play in alerting, preparing and accompanying such contribution. A contribution that is in the interest of business, but also of a more effective democratic decision-making process, as it allows policymakers to take more informed and evidence-based decisions. Next year, direct election of the European Parliament in May and the renewal of the European Commission in July will be instrumental to draft that answer and be the main testbed for shaping the role of Europe for the years ahead. The electoral text and people participation to the vote is probably the biggest challenge for policymakers, not only in Brussels, as they face the paradox of decreasing confidence and increasing expectation of the European citizens vis-à-vis -vis the EU institutions.